think he cooked up in three or four places. Uh, and one is immensely personal for James. And, and I was incredibly privileged to be involved in that personal experience. Um, so James himself um, um, was by then working as a, a, um, a, a, an alcohol and drug worker in a, a, an agency that was getting money via the criminal justice system, providing what they think called drug intervention program stuff and, and things like that, and was obviously exceptionally good, at, I, I think, at that stuff and uh, brilliant relationships with um, the individuals accessing services. Um, and he went through a period, uh, and I'll keep this really short, in which he challenged the organisation in wanting to whistleblow about the inappropriateness of a, a member of his staff. And at that point in time, because him and I had already been connected in the stuff that we talked about, you know, the, you know, the bits of the Recovery Academy, and, and we kind of knew each other and stuff. And I'd been visiting his organisation more broadly, um, at the, um, because I also knew his boss, who's also a good friend of mine and in recovery. Um, James contacted me privately um, and we probably spent about a year and a half when him and I met in private and I gave him um, uh, uh, effectively um, personal friendship support and more like clinical supervision to help him work through this process. And the net result of the process was that he decided to go ahead and do the whistleblowing. And he knew by the moment that he decided to do that action, he almost certainly would end up losing his job, the possibility of the organisation. And he'd already then obviously reflected on the fact himself that actually he's already too frustrated being part of the system and wanted to do something alternative. So all of that went on. And so him and I got this really good relationship and he got a relationship by then agro had formed itself. And that was important. Um, and he's working um, with two or three people in agro and agro. Uh, it's got his two or three people running them, but then it's got a small group of um, peers coming together and it's starting to do community activities, um, bits of uh, uh, physical or horticultural, other recreational, not so much of what we might call traditional group work and stuff. So genuine community recovery stuff. Um, and somewhere in this process of him needing to walk away from the job, um, he's going to end up having to do something on his own and he's not sure what he's going to do. The bubblings of ideas of the antithesis of what he's experiencing, the emerging stuff that's occurring around the recovery stuff this recovery window that you know that we've talked about and his exposure to national conferences marches but also the agro stuff um there's a moment in time and i don't know how that came about but he invited me to uh, come and see a, a a building with him in bangor and stand outside what was the the former um youth hostel in bangor and we both stood outside this building with the guy that um uh, who i have uh, uh, I, I thought I'd owned it, but he wasn't the guy that had owned it. And the guy was rented it. And, 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 and he just started to do something a bit odd in, in terms of filling this youth hostel with um, uh, prison releases. Uh, and I think his world was absolutely chaos. This is um, the guy that you met or James. Yeah. The guy, the guy, the guy, the guy, the guy that's subletting this massive oh, okay. rambling falling a down youth hostel and he's trying to make a go of it by just renting each room out privately to people from prison relief on a bit of housing benefit or something and it's chaos as you <laughs> would imagine you know you can put 15 or 20 people released from prison in a building and expect them to and try to cheat it as a some bizarre house of multiple occupancy uh, absolute anarchy um <laughs> <laughs> and James outside, and he must have talked to more than just me, but he talked to me and he must have, he had three or four people at that moment in time, he talked to me and he said, look, I've got a vision for this place, what do you think? You know, uh, and he talked about the vision and he said, we could turn this into a, a, a recovery community. You know, we could actually have people uh, living together, uh, sober, supporting each other and, and, and community activity. And he had this vision right from the beginning. And, and in the conversation, it became really important that when it was established, it was so important. It, it got called North Wales Recovery Communities. Um, so important that it wasn't just seen as a rehab. It was about an integration between you know that intense residential bit of recovery but 
as opposed to other rehabs, which are almost like sealed residential rehabs. No one comes in and out, do they? And then you leave the rehab and then you're exposed to the outside world and people um, often have relapses at that moment and stuff. Uh, exactly the same as what is actually going on, of course, it happens when you have prison reliefs. You do all that work and preparation in prison and then somehow um, the prison surface... I've always amazed at this, that you work with people who've got drink problems for five or six years they're absolutely clean and sober. They're talking as much recovery as possible. And then what does the prison service do? They give them a large quantity of beer vouchers and sticks them on a mobile bar, a.k.a. a train, and expects them to get home sober without anyone around them. And support. <laughs> it is bonkers. And it's no wonder most people then get off the train at the other end and, and have already drunk the uh, the prison release money and <laughs> don't meet their family and, uh, you know, are found six or seven days later and the spiral's begun again. Um, so these... So, and he had this vision and, and he said, what do you think? And I said, yeah, why not? Um, and then the other bit of the conversation him and I were having in these supervision conversations, and, and like I say, I'm not party to all the other conversations he was having, but him and I were having a real conversation about that you can't do this with standard drug and alcohol commissioning money. This became the other important conversation. If we took drug and alcohol commissioning money, all the negative conversation you and I've just talked about would be imposed upon the organization. We'd be counting the beans. We'd be delivering the type of service they want. We'd be a subservient uh, um, final tick stop to a, a system and a, a statutory sector that none of us really were 100% that comfortable with and all the rest of it and our criminal justice sector. And so, we talked about the fact that it's going to have to make this go financially without. So anyway, the, 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 the short version of the long story is that James somehow agrees with this other guy. Um, and I, he doesn't need to be named in any of this story, but that James will actually sublease it from him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, um, and and uh, essentially, uh, North Wales Recovery Community um, takes over this youth hostel and its inherent group of chaotic residents yes <laughs> and continues to do so for the first 12 months and tries to have recovery conversations with them and it becomes really difficult and we know that you can't build a recovery conversation unless you have enough uh, simplistically but if there's enough if there's not enough clean time in the room the balance is wrong you've got to have enough yeah. clean time in the room um so that's a slow clock to turn around um, and initially it's just happening on oh. the shoestring. It's happening on the shoestring, the same as the guy was. So the only income coming in is the guy's housing benefit. They're renting for the room. There's nothing else. And whilst that covers the bills and, and, and their food and stuff, it doesn't leave a lot round the edge to em employ staff to support and stuff. Um, and we always wanted a low staff threshold because that's the whole point of recovery community. 